Hi class, um, as I promised you today, I'm going to give you some synthesis tips. I, I realize that you may not appreciate this handout you have, but in your packet, you already have possession of something that's called a good synthesis strategy. It's also up on my website. It really works. I Please read this. If you read it, it will really help you. It describes how to activate alkanes, how to switch functional groups into other positions, how to interconvert functional groups. It's really, really useful. Please read it. It's called a good synthesis strategy. Um, the other thing is you have to learn your reactions well. I have said this many, many times that you can't do synthesis until you know your reactions well. This means you have to know them backwards as well as forwards. So for this reason, I suggest that you take your flashcards, and even if you're not using my flashcards, make a basic flashcard of each reaction that you've learned. Sort them by the functional group that you're making. Then, sit and force your brain to think backwards to the starting material. I can't even explain to you how well this works. So, in other words, if you have reactions that make diols, Visinal diols. You can think about the various ways you make visinal diols and the way that you make a cis diol versus a trans diol. If you push yourself to think about how you do it, what reagents are involved, you will get much better at synthesis. Okay? Um, people have not utilized this yet. However, I gave you something called Reaction Jeopardy. It's at the very beginning of your packet. It already has all the reactions sorted in this manner. They're sorted by what you are making. It is very useful to look at that because it's a really good summary of the reactions. Um, okay, so with that said, there are a couple things that might be helpful to you. Um, one thing is to realize that many of the synthesis are going to revolve around carbon-carbon bond formations. And right now, you only have two, okay? You have carbon, uh, a, the attack of a very, very strong, um, what we call a super base on an epoxide, and you have the diels alder. That's pretty much it. I could probably come up with another one. Um, you could, another thing you could do, so these are, this is, a, this is sorting, by the way. This is reaction sorting. A CC, CC bond formation. All right, I'll add one more to the list. Okay, so if you had, um, what you have right now is if you have an epoxide and you add superbase to it. Now the superbase could be in the form of an organolithium or a Grignard. And on Friday I am going to show you how to make Grignards. This is called a Grignard. You'll see Grignards. All over but even if you don't know the name I expect you to be able to work with a carbanion okay if you have either of these reagents with this the strong base will attack the epoxide the epoxide will open up and you will end up with this kind of a structure I did already outline this in class and you should have it in your notes okay then you can add some acid to it in a second step and you will get this alcohol this alcohol can be converted into a variety of compounds. So that is one carbon-carbon bond formation. And by the way, while I'm on the topic, the way you make Grignards is you make them from halides. And the way you make organolithiums, you make them from halides. So for example, if I have Rx, where X is a halide, and I add two equivalents of lithium to it, I will have an organolithium. And if I have Rx, again, where X is a halide, and I add magnesium to it, I will, add, I will make a Grignard, but we'll, we'll go over this in more detail one day. Grignards will be studied through the whole semester. How am I for time? Uh, about two and a half minutes. In or out? In. Okay. So, um, what other ways do you have to make carbon-carbon bonds? Really, you have the, the, you have the Diels Alder, and you have... Um, you could use something that you learned in the fall. In the fall, you, you had this reaction. So if you have this anion, 
okay, and a primary substrate with a good leaving group on it, like an X. You can do an SN2 reaction to make a carbon-carbon bond. Let's just put an R group here, R prime, and you would make this. This is not significantly different than the epoxide approach. This is an SN2. Now notice I'm only using very specific reactions. I'm not just going willy-nilly making up reactions. So you could do this, you could do the epoxide opening, okay, and this is kind of similar to the epoxide opening in a way. And finally, all you've got is the um, Diels Alder. Okay, and the Diels Alder is a major carbon carbon bond formation. So you, you would do a Diels Alder when, of course, you were trying to make a six membered ring or anything related to a six membered ring. So you really, this is it. This is all you've got to build your carbon frame. And then after that, you have to manipulate functional groups. Okay? And that sheet that I gave you called um, a good synthesis strategy shows you how to manipulate functional groups. So, for example, or before I do that, let me give you a couple other little tips. Um, reaction, you should know, you need to know, certain basic reactions just to keep moving along. So you need to know certain addition reactions. Okay, which addition reactions? Well, it would be great if you knew them all. But there are certain ones that are particularly important. You need to know all hydration reactions. So that means you need to know the addition of um, H3O plus and I'm gonna, I'm just to save time, I'm gonna write oxymercuration reduction. Okay, you need to know hydroboration. Okay, these two are Markovnikov additions. This is an anti Markovnikov addition. You need to know addition reactions or you can't get by. Um, you need to know the addition of HX with and without peroxides. Need to know. Okay, now again, if you go over that reaction jeopardy sheet, that will all be covered. Okay, this would really be HBr with and without peroxides. Okay, um, what else do you need to know? You need to know how to do elimination reactions, specifically E2 elimination reactions. You need to know um, SN2 reactions. It's very important. You can't survive without them. And finally, you need to know that when you have an alkane, just a simple alkane like this, and you want to activate that alkane, you want to put some um, functional groups on it, you need to be able to do a free radical bromination to get the functional group in. Because without the functional group, you really can't do any chemistry. So you need to be able to do E2, SN2, and th this. This would be a good little pocket full of reactions to get you started on moving functional groups around. That doesn't mean you don't need to know the new reactions from this semester. So, just to show you how you go about this. Hold on, how much time do I have? About a minute left. A minute? Uh-oh, that's not good. All right. So, to, to get you started on this, supposing you had... And I apologize to the people in the class because for whatever reason, all day long, I have been doing this reaction with people in my office. So anyone who's seen this already, I apologize. But supposing you, had, you were going to make this, and all you had at your disposal was this. I'm going to be even like, well, all right, we'll start with this and this. Supposing that's all you've got. If this is what you've got, you've got to hook this carbon onto this carbon. Okay, because this target molecule up here has one, two, three, four carbons. You've got to hook this onto this. All right, if you're thinking about that, 
really the only reaction that I gave you that's suitable is the epoxidation, is the opening of an epoxide. That's really the only suitable way to do this. You, you really can't do the Diels Alder. Um, you don't really know how to convert that into a triple bond, so you can't do that triple bond reaction. So the only suitable re reaction here is the epoxide. So what would you have to do? You would have to convert this into an epoxide. How do you do that? You have to know the epoxidation reactions. What are they? MCPB, MCPBA or conversion of this into a halohydrin followed by treatment with base. These are in your notes. You have a day where I covered epoxidations. You would have to convert this into a super base. So you'd have to add some lithium to it and turn it into an organolithium. If you made the organolithium, you could use this to attack this, open it up, and make this compound. Once you had this compound, it would be relatively easy to convert it into this compound if you protonate followed by oxidation. So you could use like cr chromic acid. All right, so, but the point I'm making here is your synthesis should revolve around the carbon-carbon bond formation. When you figure out which carbon-carbon bond formation you, you want to make, you want to use, you've got to convert the reagents into suitable forms so that you can do it. Then you manipulate the fun functional group. Okay, so in another video, I'm going to give you a little more information. See you in class. Thanks.